Namaste, Namaskar, Vanakam, Sashrikal, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali, and today we're going to be reacting to Christine Fair, last of Hacky Fulbright Scholar over UN Resolution on Catch Me. Yes, so we did uh, Christine Fair's kind of a little bit of background, background yeah. about Kashmir and um, Jammu and Kashmir and Article 370 and 35A. We were kind of um, just giving ourselves a little bit more information yes. about it. And um, so after doing that, there was a big people wanted more. And so I know we're not really, we try not to be a political channel. We're just yeah. people requesting stuff, and so we're trying to find things. A balance. Right, a good balance. And this is a little bit just more about the facts and not so much about, you know, taking sides. Like, I feel like her stuff is definitely very factual, and she's not an Indian. She's not a Pakistani. So she, it's like... she just likes to gather this research, and she's read a lot of, the information and she seems like very very knowledgeable about this stuff my husband said when he listens to her he learns new stuff every time because even though india's history books put some of it in there he didn't know all the details yeah. and so to hear her speak about the details of it really um you know puts it into perspective just puts it in a better light and and he feels more knowledgeable about the the background and you know yeah how Kashmir really was a part of India first. And so this was just, you know, we, we did, uh, Akubar's, oh my God, I'm going to chop his name. Syed Akubardhan. Yes. Um, UN speech. And he did amazing just defending India. And so we, you know, this is just a little bit more of us learning more. I know it's a hot topic you know, in the news and, and everywhere in India. So we just wanted to, you know, spread a little bit more knowledge out there. And yes. um, Christine Fair seems to have a lot of it. So we're going to listen to her speak. Go ahead, Angie. Okay, I want to call on this gentleman right here. Thank you. My name is Hitesh and I'm a Fulbright Scholar here in the United States. Uh, of course, I haven't read the book, but my observations are based on the presentation made by Christine. Uh, unfortunately, I found some of the, uh, there is a lot to debate about, but I understand I am a participant only, I can make only use of limited time. I found some of the, uh, some of the arguments were very selectively used, and only one side of the picture was presented. For example, a couple of examples. Uh, you said, Kashmir, Pakistan has no legal, legal basis uh, on, on Kashmir. I don't understand what sort of legal basis should we have. You have mentioned about the UN resolution. You have mentioned that India went to uh, a security council and security council said that let's the, let the Kashmiris decide, uh, let, let, me, let us have a plebiscite there. So that's a legal basis. Go and ask the Kashmiris with whom they want to go. Uh, my second observation, uh, yes, we had a beautiful lawn back there in our, uh, in our homeland. But it was uh, late 1970s, at the peak of Cold War, Soviet Union just entered Afghanistan, and here was the CIA and the Americans. They uh, went uh, to Pakistan and Afghanistan, and fortunately, incidentally, they found an ally in the form of ISI or whatever, and they jointly created this jihad narrative. Kashmir was, is not the only thing which is behind those groups which you, you are calling the jihadists and terrorists. In fact, Kashmir has always been there. The jihadis, the rise of jihadis has been after the uh, Soviet Union entered and then CIA went there and IS worked with the ISC and the jihad narrative was brought, groups were made and fought with, and then the Soviets were pushed out. Soviets were pushed out and then US le left uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan in the lurch and Afghanistan fell into the hands of the warlords. All right, so, so you need to read my book because every single thing that you just said is fictional. Let's first begin with the UN Security Council Resolution 48. Sir, have you read it? Have you read? No. Okay. So you fir the first thing I'm going to encourage you to do is go on to the UN Security Council's website and read that fabulous resolution that every Pakistani points to, but which not a single one has read. I also then want you to take the actual version from the UN Security Council, and then I want you to compare that to the claims made by Pakistan's 
permanent representation to the UN. And you're going to understand your confusion, sir. So the resolution is actually very clear. There are three steps. They were sequential and they were conditional. The very first step was that Pakistan was supposed to demilitarize to the satisfaction of this UN body that was to be established. Then, conditional upon the UN being so satisfied with this demilitarization, India was also supposed to demilitarize with a presence being permitted to defend itself against Pakistani aggression. The third, having both of those two steps taken place to the satisfaction in sequence to this preferences of the UN, then the plebiscite would be held. So all those Pakistanis that are so upset about the plebiscite that never happened, they have their own government to blame because Pakistan never fulfilled the first necessary but insufficient condition. So I'm going to encourage you to actually read that before you ever make such a fool of yourself again by presenting it in public, right? So just do yourself a favor by reading the darn thing. Second, I want you to also learn a little bit about your country's Afghanistan policy. Sir, do you know that it was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto that began the ISI cell in Afghanistan? That in fact it was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto who began setting up what became the Seven Donkeys before the Soviet Union even crossed the Amu Darya. Did you know this, sir? No, 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 I want you to answer my question. Did you know this, sir? No. Okay, so this idea that somehow the United States used Pakistan in some sort of anti, you know, uh, some sort of effort to dispel the, the Soviets is completely an incorrect reading of your own history. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, after King Zahir Shah was ousted and Dowd came to power and began um, implementing pro-Soviet policies, driving the Islamists into Iran and Pakistan respectively, Zulfikar set up an ISI cell so that he could then use those disenchanted, disenfranchised Islamists to become vectors of Pakistan's policy in Afghanistan. Did you know that we first sanctioned Pakistan in April of 1979 because of advances made in its nuclear weapons program? If we were so interested in sucking them into our evil jihad designs, we sure did make that difficult for ourselves. <laughs> because when the Soviets did finally cross in, we actually had to, to do a bunch of maneuvering to get a waiver. And did you know that the first monies did not go into Pakistan until 1982 because of that uh, requirement to get a waiver? So before you go and, and you blame the United States for using and abusing poor Pakistan, you should familiarize yourself with your own history because in fact Pakistan had been instrumentalizing Islamists long before the Americans even knew what an Islamist was. Now, going to your next point about the Americans just leaving Pakistan high and dry. Well, this comes to it. Now, Steve Cohen is here. I'd like to hear him talk about this. Let's talk about the Pressler Amendment. Right? The press movement was actually designed so that Pakistan could continue proliferating while we continued arming you, right? because we'd first sanctioned you in April 79. Everyone understood the name of this game. When we withdrew in 1990, we withdrew. Pakistan, however, continued mucking around with the Islamists. So this idea that the jihad today are the, are the Taliban of today and al-Qaeda, this is also a really grotesque and, and, and empirical error that I don't quite frankly expect from a Fulbright student. So I'm happy to have more exchanges with you, but I think you should read my book because everything that you said is a highly stylized retelling that you get from Pakistani media in your curriculum. Wow. She really knows her stuff, right? Yeah. And like my statement to her, and I think it's her statement to herself, she's all facts and no fiction. So she knows when people are telling like fiction things, but she knows all the facts so she can like restate them. And... Right. And kind of defend. Like yeah. my husband said, she, you know, really takes the facts into consideration. And, you know, she has done some stuff on India that she hasn't agreed with. And this is something she believes Kashmir is part of India. So she's not pro-India or against Pakistan, she is definitely looking for the facts. She's definitely pulling out like this, the, you know, the government papers and saying like, this is, this is the three things that they were supposed to do and they didn't do them. And so this didn't happen, you know? And so she definitely goes through all the stuff and kind of breaks it down. Um, so people understand why, why didn't this happen, you know? And, and like he, she is saying, not it's not his fault. No, because that's what he learned in his school. In his school, if he grew up in Pakistan, which is what it sounded like, 
he learned this stuff through Pakistani media and through the curriculum. And, it, and it's not the only country that does this. I believe yeah. a lot of countries make their history books for the children to learn the way they want them to know about the history their of their country. Yeah. Even they my don't husband, want to know bad stuff about their right. country. They don't want to tell too many bad things about their country, but they, they kind of tweak the facts a mm-hmm. little bit to be what they want the children of their country to know and grow up and learn. Like my husband said, he watches this and, and some he's amazed at some of the stuff she says that he didn't know. Like he didn't really know that, you know, when German Kashmir at the beginning, like they wanted to be their own state. And, you know, when Pakistan started to attack, they went to India and said, okay, we'll be part of you if you help us defend ourselves. And that's how that happened. And he's like, I didn't realize there was literally a signed document that said, like, we were going with India, and but Pakistan was attacking, and then they, they ended up getting some of India. And so, you know, we are not trying to be political. We're not yeah. trying to say Pakistan's wrong and India's right. We love India. You know, we're half Indian family, and, um, you know, India's our home away from home. But And we love the diversity of it. And I think that's where Pakistan needs to work on some of their own personal stuff before they kind of go and attack and try to get bigger than they are. Yeah. Like, they need to kind of work on getting a better economy, better jobs, and just, you know, you know, welcoming people of, from all faiths. I know that's a big thing there. And we did another thing on that, yeah. that they want really um, – being humane to people of different faiths so that it just kind of get your own country you know don't start talking war in other countries you know yeah. we gandhi is our savior inspiration, inspiration. and uh peace is always the answer and i love uh syed akibardin's talks not terror yeah um you know, that's really what it's about. So this, I don't want anybody to think we're, we're bashing anyone. This was just, she really nails it with the facts. She pulls out the articles, she pulls out the things, and I think she really doesn't try to take sides. She just tries to tell it how it is. Yeah. So this was just, you know. Telling facts straight on. Right. A little bit of information to share. I know you guys were asking for some more. So definitely check out her website. Yeah. Check out more of her stuff. She was talking about a book. Yeah. Um, my husband will probably read it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she really is amazing. And uh, one of these days, Anjali might interview her. We'll, we'll have Hi. her over for chai and um, some spill food. The spill the chai. And see if we can get her to, to chat with us, um, even if it's virtually we'll, we'll try to figure something out yeah. but um we really like how she talks she's really knowledgeable and yes. um hope you like this and if you like this video don't forget to click that like button down below the more you like the more youtube shares our videos and don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful family and we'll see you tomorrow bye, bye.